This guy is setting off fireworks in the rain. This does not seem safe. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are checking out Theme Park. This is like the loneliest episode of Peanuts ever. With grotesquely inhuman dolls. This is terrifying. I'm the advisor, and I'm here to take you to a magical land. No need to be afraid, they're just beamed out of your television. Oh my god, he just <laughs> he abducted the kid. That dog does not want to go with him. That they're terrified. This could be the start of a horror movie. Oh my god. <laughs> it's funny how like really bad CGI can actually make things very terrifying. Because I'm sure when they developed this, they were like, oh man, then we're going to have like everything in 3D and stuff falling out of the sky. It's going to look so amazing. But this is so far down the Uncal Uncanny Valley. You might as well be in the Uncanny, I don't know, pit. It is terrifying. Wow. That kid said there. Flying around in planes, not licensed. All right, let's hop ahead here. We are playing Theme Park. This is a DOS classic. What is your nickname? My nickname is Jay. Nice to meet you. This is a DOS classic from the fellows at Bullfrog Productions. Also the, the fellows behind Dungeon Keeper, which I've already played for my series. So let's hop in here and set up a new park. I've already filled in some of this info. Jay the Conqueror. Um, Jay the Conqueror is 25. Jay the Conqueror, his park name is The Fun Place 2B. Get it? 2B? Yeah. Uh, there's actually not enough room to write 2B. So I had to, I had to get improvise there. Uh, we're going to go with uh, sandbox mode. Because we just want to be able to build stuff. And I'll talk about this in a little bit. Park visitors, we want people to be happy. We don't want people to be fussy. We don't, I don't like fussy people. We like happy people. Start level. We're going to go with easy. Keep things nice and easy for ourselves. Opponents, sure, leave all the opponents all on. Opponents easy. First game. Okay. I made the mistake of clicking yes on this before. And it took me to, to, to a tutorial that I kind of got locked into. So my one thing I will say right off the bat with this game is I tried this a little bit before making this video and the menus in this game do not hold up well they're not super intuitive like okay I want to build a park we can build a park anywhere in the world we could go to North America South America I mean you could build a park in Nigeria I don't know if, it, if theme parks are, are traditionally successful in like Africa or you know Kuwait the Mid East it does not seem like the most stable territory to be uh, creating a theme park but we can't we don't have enough money but the only gold icon here is England so you go okay well I guess I'll build it here all these stats look good check now what happens uh, check so you would think you would click here that just brings you back to the main menu what you have to do is click here and then click on this faded part here this is by land Jay the Conqueror now owns a little bit of Europe and now, if you click this arrow, or this check mark, you go to the main menu. So this is just a little example of, oh my god. Okay, we have to slow this down significantly. Alrighty. So, uh, another thing about playing these really old DOS games is that if you are not on the ball with setting these games up to run at a reasonable speed, they'll just take off, some of them. So we were playing at, like, warp speed there which is like a normal speed for a modern computer. And probably about three or four years went by in the blink of an eye, and our park just did not get developed at all. So here it is, theme park. Okay, we're going to start off with some pretty basic attractions here. I'm going to start off with a bouncy castle. I did play this uh, a little bit, and I found in my initial playthrough that everyone liked the bouncy castle. And I'm not talking about kids, I'm talking about full-grown adults. They went nuts over the Bouncy Castle. That so much so that the Bouncy Castle ended up exploding. It, uh, it started to catch fire. Okay, these people want to get in. We're just going to go ahead and open the park while we're doing renovations. There we go. Grand opening for the place to be. It has a Bouncy Castle and nothing else. Seems like a theme park I'd want to go to. 
Okay, let's let's do this here. I'm gonna build some nice open walkways for all our wonderful people to hang out in. I wonder if we can adjust the speed. Game speed, slow. There we go. Slow everything down just a bit. So these people are coming in. These look like full-grown adults, not children. And look, they're going nuts over the bouncy castle. They love it. All right. Uh, there's lots more to do here. So, yeah. I, I've i already said I'm not a huge fan of the controls of this game. I feel like they don't hold up that well. Because here's the thing. Okay, I never played this when I was uh, a kid. My first time playing this is for this series. And I actually recorded an entire playthrough playing this. Um, and it was kind of a big struggle because I recorded one playthrough trying to play through the tutorial and that ended up being a disaster and I had to, to scrap it and I was like okay I'll try again and I did another playthrough putting a little log bench fence thing here for people I don't know kind of looks nice right I did another playthrough where I didn't do the tutorial and I just tried to play the game normally and that turned into a disaster too oh so many disasters and so I realized, you know what, I just need to play this thing in sandbox mode, and I need to play it in like a very kind of like low pressure um, state. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm literally just kind of messing around here in theme park. I'll show off some of the more interesting features uh, in a little bit. But uh, yeah, this is it. You basically get to create a theme park. You set ticket prices. Look, they're bouncing the bouncing, ca <laughs> bouncing castle so much, they're going to destroy it. Okay, we need maintenance workers. Um, I think these guys clean up junk. Okay, what are what are people waiting? Oh, okay. We'll we'll look at that menu later. Okay, good. Maze, yay! French fries. What are people waiting in line to see at the treehouse? It is a treehouse, and there's like someone hiding in there. <laughs> All right. Uh, we need maintenance workers. We also need a guy in an octopus suit. Because why do we not need a guy in an octopus suit? Forget the walrus. Here's what we need. Okay, you... Can you fix the bouncy castle, sir? Okay, these guys, as soon as you hire them, they go on lunch. It's ridiculous. Dude, the bouncy castle is falling apart right behind you. Can you please fix it? Let's hire some security, too, to keep the ruffians out. Everyone's screaming about hamburgers. They all want food. Fine. Things are happening so fast. If you people would just wait a minute. Give me 10 seconds. I will build you a place to eat all the hamburgers you want. Which hamburgers are my favorite food. So I can't really complain that people want hamburgers. Because uh, I think it's fast food, toys, sweets. Okay. People need something to eat. And I think people need something to drink. Isn't that traditionally what people do? at these uh, theme parks, coffee shop, oops, what else, what else can we give people? Uh, people like candy? Okay, I never understood this part of uh, theme parks. Why do you go to a theme park to like eat a bunch of junk food? Because here's the thing, theme park rides, like the joke is that they make you throw up, right? Like they're very rough on people and they make them very nauseous. So when did like food become part of a theme park? It seems like a very, very poor choice of things to, like, pair up together. You know, like, do, do you see what I'm saying? It's like, why would you, for theme parks, where you're going on rides that are making you ill, making you very nauseous, why would you also want to eat? Maybe it's just me. I never get the urge to eat at a theme park. Never, ever. Look at these huge walkways. Tons of room for people. There we go. We don't need any flowers hanging around. Oh, we can also hire maintenance workers, and we can make them mow the lawn. Yeah, there we go. Tend the grounds, boys. Hey, they repaired the bouncy castle. Good. Don't want another one of those blowing up. When it blows up, the guys fly at the screen. It's pretty funny. Okay, our octopus is entertaining people. Uh, we need more food, though, I think. I wanted to put in... Quack, quack. What? Oh, it's like, uh, it's like one of those stupid carnival things. That's funny. That's like also like very, very stereotypical uh, of a carnival. 
guess we'll put in this thing too. Toys or something. We're gonna make all the money we can off these little kids. These dumb little kids and their influential parents. Parents who are all bouncing on the bouncy castle. I guess some of these people must be kids. The kids in the, the pink shorts kind of look like children, maybe? I don't know. So, okay, this, this is theme park. Um, and let me give you a quick rundown here. So what I've been doing is building rides, and you have to build lines and stuff, and you have to balance ticket prices with popularity and maintenance. So you can go in here and you can see we've been hemorrhaging money like a madman, pretty much because we've just expanded our park without taking in any revenues. So let's go ahead and raise our ticket prices. Guess what? It's now going to cost 150 smackers to get in the place to be. This is a park built for really the elites uh, of this world. You can look at happiness, you can see what people are complaining about. I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, and I am both hungry and thirsty. <laughs> I like how that's like a third option. It's like, check one of these, please. I am hungry, I am thirsty, or I am hungry and thirsty. It's like, couldn't you just check both of the others? Um, what else we got going on here? Here's a map. We got our different employees that we can hire. At some point, we might actually have to negotiate with these people. My other playthrough, I totally had to negotiate. Um, and they kept coming to negotiate with me, and I didn't know how to negotiate, so I kept turning down their offers. But meanwhile, I was like, no, I will accept your offer. I just don't know what to do. And it kind of, this goes back to my thing about how I feel like the controls in this game are not as intuitive as I would like them to be. Like, I didn't even know how to, like, accept contract negotiations with my employees. Okay, here are literally, for lack of a better word, because there's no better word, these are the shitters. I mean, just look at these things. That's the nastiest toilet I've ever seen. If I went to a theme park and they had, like, this is what you'd expect at a carnival fair. I don't know why this is what, you know, <laughs> look at the rest of the theme park. Look at the production values that go in. I mean, you have a coffee shop shaped like a giant latte coffee. And then you literally have, like, Uncle John's porta potties made out of, like, rotting wood. It's disgusting. They could not have given you normal toilets. Um, apparently, we can also... Here's some details. So, one interesting aspect about this game is it's like a bookkeeper's dream. Like, you can look at all the little... Di details of the finances which is actually pretty interesting you can invest in other parks which is kind of interesting and other parks can invest in you if you're successful you can also engage in, and you can look at like all this the stuff like you know if i was in finance I, I would probably find this super interesting because this is not a game that i played very much i don't like there's inflation and interest oh my god this is crazy they they're, they're there's so much to learn here. I mean, SimCity was kind of like this, but not to this detail. You know, like SimCity was a simulator where you ran a whole city and it didn't have this much sophistication, I feel. Okay. Professor Moneybags is beating us. Surprise, surprise. Bingo Highway. This is in 1996. Oh my god. That's 20 years ago. We are simulating building a theme park 20 years ago. Jeez. Bingo Highway, S. Johnston, don't know who that is, M. Thatcher, so Margaret Thatcher, Simon Hill, Gladstone, John Kennedy, why do they, why is there like famous leaders? I think there was a Nixon here when I played last time. People in your park think it is average. Well, people are stupid. Your ride is, your ride compliment is bad. People are dumb. Your safety record is great. Popularity of your park is average. Technology is bad. Yeah, my biggest attraction is a freaking bouncy pad. <laughs> like a like a bouncy castle for adults. Okay. In the normal version of this, you actually have to research different rides. But in this version that I've got, the sort of sandbox mode, it I guess it just unlocks... Yeah, it just unlocks different rides as we go. And again, I think that's what we need like as a group right now because as i say i tried to play this sort of more for real and it turned into a big old nightmare okay because this is a snake ride we have like a really snaky line that people have to wait in oh my god it's raining 
Um, did I not build an exit for this sneak ride? I don't even know where it would be. Nobody's in the bouncy castle in the rain. Okay, there we go. They should be able to get out of the snake ride. So these little steps are where they exit. And if you don't put a path for them to exit, they won't go into the ride. Now what's happening with this guy? <laughs> it's a slide! Man, that is a crappy ride. People are right. My park does suck. Where, where are the roller coasters? Do planning... Find them... Yeah, so normally you can do research, but I guess I can't. That's okay. Alright, teacups. Everyone loves teacups. We should put this near the food section. So that people buy food. Then they throw it up. And then they have to, to, you know, buy more food to fill themselves back up. It's disgusting, but it's a business model. Don't knock what works, people. Um, no, I don't want to build this, though. There we go. There we go, teacups. And again, I have no idea where the exit steps were placed. So I'm just going to take a stab at it. Wait, why are they doing maintenance on the snake ride? That thing is brand new. Through your bad park planning, one of the little people has got completely stuck. What? Somebody gets stuck in the ride? That's pretty funny. Now people are buying balloons. This is like where the action is. People like the haunted house. And they love that freaking bouncy castle. It always has the longest line. I don't get it. There's like one lonely fellow riding the teacups by himself. Just contemplating his life like, uh, I wish I had a girlfriend. Why did I come to the park alone today? You couldn't let this guy on? Nope, now he rides. <laughs> now he's contemplating his life. This is a uh, singles teacup. It's in the uh, singles only part of the, the park for young single people to come and uh, think of all the mistakes they made that led them to this point in their life. Okay. Sure, whatever. Um, well, I guess that's the line. That's terrible park planning right there. Like, that is a horrible plan. But, like, no one's going to want to go in there. We slide right out. All right, your bad part planning. Okay, we know my planning's bad. Go away, you, you weirdo. Uh, what else can we do here? Just trying to try things out here. So, as I say, this game was created by Bullfrog uh, Productions, which are the guys behind uh, Dungeon Keeper. You know, the, the successor to this game was really, I guess, Theme Hospital. So they, they really had a whole kind of simulation angle going on. The guys at Bullfrog were really like, whoops, I don't know how to undo that. Oh, there we go. The guys at Bullfrog really like to create these simulator games. And they do a good job of them. Like this, you know, I kind of make, I'm making fun of how complicated this game is with like, you need a degree in finance to really understand it. But at some level, that's pretty darn cool. I mean, think about when this game came out. Like, it would have been pretty... I don't want to say revolutionary. But it would have been pretty, like, cool to be able to do all this on your old DOS computer all of a sudden. I wonder if when someone goes in the ride, if we take away the exit, if now they're just, like, trapped in there forever. Like, what will happen? There's, there's someone in there. Trying to find his way out. There's a squirrel and periscopes. Can we can we trap him in there forever? I used to do this in The Sims. I would like build a pool, and once a bunch of Sims got in the pool, take away the ladder. <laughs> they would just swim around till they drown. Or once they go into a room, you could sell the door and then like trap them in there for days. And they would like <laughs> they would like pee themselves and pass out. Eventually, I think they'd starve. Okay, yeah, this guy we we sold the the entrance there. That guy's not not getting out. Oh. Ah, uh, I guess they just walk out at some point. That's too bad. I wanted to be able to be really cool, to, cruel to them. I remember Roller Coaster Tycoon when I was a kid. It was kind of like this, except you built roller coasters instead of uh, theme parks. And I remember there, 100%, 
we would uh, build roller coasters that would like send people flying off into the rides, <laughs> like suicide coasters. People would line up and ride them. They would line up, get on them, and they, they just there's no end to that track. It's just like, oh, just killed 20 more people. And the bouncy castle is once again falling apart. Is that puke? Is this puke? Are people puking after they ride the damn bouncy castle? Jeez. All right, what, what else can we build here? I think we've built everything. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, we're in sandbox mode, just kind of playing around. Um, all right, let's hire a chicken. We're going to have, like, mascot row down here. Uh, a weird fat man. Uh, a rhino. Why not? Something for the kids, eh? Security guard to keep it all PG. And more of these guys, because apparently they're just not doing their job. There you go. A couple of people are in line for the maze. Kind of a boring attraction to line up for a maze. Alright, Jay the Conqueror, number four. I think I was third last time, so I'm 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 slowly coasting towards defeat. All right, here we go. Finally, something that looks like an interesting ride. Ooh, a novelty shop. A gun shooting range? That's cool. Okay, do I have these things? Do they unlock, or is it just showing it to me? It's like, hey, look at all the other things you could build, but you don't get to. Uh, let me build it. Ooh, it's snowing. There we go. There we go. Okay, you know what? And we're going to slash ticket prices. Because we need people coming to this park. Uh, we're going down to 80. Because we have a hot new attraction. We want people here. Come on, people. I guess if you design the park so that food is like sprinkled around, you might get people coming over here. Seems like they're probably all over near like Food Row. We need toilets over here, too. <laughs> okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build the toilets, like, right beside the maze. So that when people are going through the maze, they'll be like, Oh my god, what's that smell? <laughs> Serves you right for waiting in line to go in a hedge maze in, like, a freaking amusement park. Okay, we'll sell some refreshments. And some novelties. And, oh, we'll have a gun shooting range over here. And we need food, too. Because people got to have something to puke up. These amusement parks. That's what people like to do. My favorite amusement park is Canada's Wonderland. Surprise, surprise. Um, but it's not because it's Canadian and I'm Canadian. It is because, here's my, my thing about Canada's Wonderland. It's got amazing rides, but it doesn't have great production value. So when you go, it's just sort of like a bunch of roller coasters with very little theme and like, you know, a ride would not be dressed up like a snake. It would just be a giant slide. And so you would think at outset, the park doesn't look super amazing. Um, it does have, well, I'm not really selling it well. Canada's Wonderland has some amazing looking rides. It's just... Not this extravagant. When you go to American theme parks, I find a lot of them are very, very, very dressed up. And in my experience, going to both Canada's Wonderland and, and American theme parks, the American ones, they're definitely good. But, the, but Canada's Wonderland is just way more intense and better rides. And so I think it's a thing of like, the American theme parks are spending a bit of their money on production value, which there's nothing wrong with it. But it turns out that if you just spend all your money on having the best rides you can, then you can actually create some of the best rides. So I think Canada's Wonderland has some of the best rides. It does not, however, have a creepy bear. But our park does. A creepy bear with, like, a sword or something. Okay, this is Bear Alley. Oh, no, wait. I changed my mind. I want to fire him. How do I do that? Uh-oh, I'm just, like, breaking down... Park. All right, we have two creepy bears. I guess they're on pogo sticks. Hmm. Thought it'd be funnier to have one creepy lonely bear. This kid is just sad for no apparent reason. Well, kid, go, go home or play a video game or something. Imagine you're this guy. This guy's job is to mow all of this. 
Like, he mowed this. <laughs> Hold on, we gotta go to the map for a second. His job is to mow all of this. Look at him, he's just out there. He comes in every day to the fun place to be, and he's like, tells his wife after work, he's like, oh, they got me mowing. It's like five, six football fields. It's just empty lot. But the boss wants it mowed, so that when the bus loads of visitors come to the park, they can look out and see the dewy green meadow for as far as the eye can see. We should play like tag out here. Or have summer games. Alright. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. There's one bear out there. <laughs> He's the loneliest bear of them all. You don't move. That is your station. And I tell you what. At the other end, no, actually, we're not even gonna. I was gonna say we'll put some other things out there. No, just one bear. I'll buy your lonesome. And we need an octopus over here to like excite people, get them interested. I think our park is looking good. We're back to hemorrhaging money. We were bringing in money for a little while, but now we're just significantly losing money. All right, there we go. So this is it. This is theme park. Um, as you can see. Uh, you're basically simulating building a park. It's kind of SimCity-esque, um, although it kind of mixes elements of, like, The Sims, I feel. Like, it's a lower level of simulator than SimCity. With SimCity, you never really saw any of the individual citizens. You'd see cars and stuff, but not the individual citizens. Here we can see individual customers. And I think you can even click on customers and, like, ask them. Yeah, you can, like, see what they're thinking. So this guy's happy, she's hungry, he's hungry, he's unhappy, maybe he's lost, who knows. But yeah, you can sort of micromanage at a much finer grain level than you can in SimCity, which is kind of cool. This game definitely, I've been playing it in sandbox mode just to like build a park and explore a little. And if this is a game that you grew up cherishing, hopefully this brings back tons of memories to you. I make no claims that I am doing a good job, by the way, I'm just kind of having a bit of fun with this game, um, seeing what there is to see, seeing what it, there is I could build. If you really want to get into it, obviously you have to dive head deep into the finances, you have to think about what technology you're going to research, because you can actually, in the normal mode, research stuff, you can invest in other companies, you have to think a lot more about hiring staff, because you might have to negotiate with them. There's a lot of complexity to this game, and I think that's a good thing. My major complaint is as this was not a game I grew up playing on. Oh, Bad Park Planning, one of the little people has got completely stuck. When you say little people, do you mean midgets or children? Because, like, is that your British way of saying children? Or is there literally, you know, little people walking around the park? Which is fine, I'm not saying they shouldn't be, but just curious. So, as someone who did not grow up, he's <laughs> looking for the exit and he's lost. Yes, this is what we want. People stuck in our, in our park. Wait, let's watch him for a sec. Oh, he got distracted. Now he's getting a hamburger. He might be a she, actually. Now she's thirsty. Yeah, you're going to be here for days. There is no exit. Shut the gates. Can we close the gates? Oh, no, we can't. That'd be funny. Lock everyone in. So as someone who did not grow up playing this game, the learning curve for this is rather steep. Not in concept, because the concept of managing a theme park and, and placing down rides and stuff is pretty simple. But a lot of the menus, navigating the menus and clicking on things, nothing is too intuitive, I will say. So my one huge complaint about this game is that I don't think they did as good a job with the menus as uh, they needed to. And you could say, well, it's an older game, you know, you got to give it a bit of, uh, a bit of leeway there. But I would say, like, it's just this, you know, simple matters of, like, coloring buttons. Like, on that initial screen when I had to buy a park, the buy park option, I thought that was just a title. I didn't realize it was a button I was supposed to click. So I think they could have done a better job in making the menus more intuitive and the controls more intuitive. That is my own perspective. I think Richard Nixon was on that list now. Ooh, clown. Clown axe. Ooh, hamburger, that's what everyone wants. Okay, let's build one of those as, as we wrap up here. A hamburger joint. That's where I would be parking myself. Actually, who are we kidding? I'd be on the bouncy castle with everyone else. Can't say no to a good bouncy castle. 
And what was the other thing we got? What the hell is this thing? What is this monstrosity? Mm -hmm. Okay. No idea where the exit is. I'm just gonna do this. Oops. Ah, eh, well, good enough. There. Oh, it's like a clown show. Yeah. See, my favorite park of amusement parks is going on the roller coasters. So, like, this kind of park would actually not interest me at all. Hey, no one let the bouncy castle suddenly old news. Yeah, I like thrill rides. Not, uh, not like... Like, this is the most exciting ride in our park. Pretty lame, if you ask me. So, yes. The controls, not ideal. That is my major complaint with this game. This was a hugely successful, widely ported game, though. Everything from, like, DOS to the Amiga to, like, Sega CD, Super Nintendo. Uh, it was on something called FM Towns, which I, I'd never even heard of. Sega Saturn, the PlayStation... The, Sony, or the Nintendo DS, and even iOS these days. So you could go and play a modern version of this. It is out there, and I'm sure that the more modern versions are a little easier to play. Uh, I was playing the old DOS version for, uh, you know, memory's sake. Anyway, this, I think, gives us a pretty good sense about Theme Park. You know, I've already talked about its pros and cons. Is this a game that you must play before you die? I would say, for modern incarnations... If you like simulator games, this is definitely one you should check out. It is a grandfather game in, a, in, a, in the sense that it really inspired a lot of later simulator games. And so this definitely... I, I totally see how there could be some appeal playing this again. These games where you have to like build up a thriving, successful economy are always kind of fun. I've spent almost all my investors' money. I'm about to uh, elope and flee to Mexico after I take all the money I can out of this park and it is revealed that my name was not in fact Jay the Conqueror. Uh, that was a pseudonym I was using to bilk investors uh, with the very lucrative plan of building a failing amusement park. So there you go, that was my master plan. One sad dude watching some clowns throw pies in each other's faces. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Definitely, this, this is sort of a DOS classic, even though the, the pixelated graphics are kind of fun to watch. Um, guys, if you have enjoyed this video, give me a like, give me a subscribe, because we'll be back in a couple days with a new video and a new game. And you know what? Eh, I don't know if I want to commit to it, but one thing is maybe one day I'll, I'll release the really bad playthrough I did of this, where I was trying to learn at the same time, and it just does not go effectively. What are these things? Is that... What the hell are those? That's weird. Garbage, I guess? <laughs> anyway, um, until we meet again, guys, take care of yourselves, and peace. No, get out of there, kid! Get out of there! You're gonna blow! It's gonna die! I wish I could fire all my workers and just let the park get destroyed. How do you fire workers? How do you fire these people? Well, I figured out how to fire people. We're gonna fire all our employees. Anyone who's taking a break, they are now fired. What could possibly go wrong with this plan? How's nothing breaking? You know, with no employees around to mess anything up, our customers have never been happier. Kind of a self-serve amusement park. What just happened? Oh my god, the bouncy castle blew up again. I think this snake ride is next. Well, there goes that. Now the treehouse is blowing up. It's one after the other.